In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make a swing-based user interface using NetBeans. This video is actually part of a series in Spring Remoting, and in this video we're going to make the client side of a Spring Remoting-based app. In other words, the client can run on a computer, and it's going to access Java classes on a server as if they were local to this computer. But we'll handle that complexity later. Right now, our only concern is making a swing-based user interface in NetBeans. Now, why NetBeans? Uh, I've used NetBeans for quite a long time in the academic environment. In the professional environment, industrial environment, uh, IntelliJ and Eclipse are a bit more common. But I like NetBeans. It's easy to learn, very simple. And what I really like is it has a really nice uh, YZWIG GUI builder. So if you need to build a swing project, then NetBeans is a good place to start. And it's all just Java code, so you could certainly start NetBeans and move it elsewhere. When I say swing, I mean something that you would start on your computer by hitting the Start button and then picking a program uh, anywhere in the Start menu, a traditional what we might call fat client application or smart client, rich client, whatever you prefer to call it. That's what we mean when we mean swing. So to start, I'm going to choose File, New Project, uh, I'm going to make this mavenized because I'm going to need to add uh, some spring, not to be confused with swing, but some spring apps uh, a little bit later, some spring configuration. So I'll choose maven. Uh, I'm going to call this plant client because essentially we're going to be searching for plants with this user interface. And then I'm going to choose finish. Now under sort, source packages, com.plantplaces, plant client, that's fine. I'm going to right click and say new. And now I'm going to say Java class. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm sorry. I am going to say Swing GUI Forms. And JFrame essentially represents a window. So we'll go with JFrame. And let's just call this Plant Admin, for lack of a better word. Plant Admin. And then Finish. OK. Now, this is the YZWIG editor I was talking about that I like quite a bit. So what I want to have here is a simple text field that I'll put towards the top. And I also want a button that I can use for searching. So I'm going to take button, drag that. Now we want to make as much, of, as much use of this top real estate for the text field. So I'll drag it over to the right a little bit. Now, a couple things we want to do. We want to change the, let me go over here to properties, because we want to change the variable names to something that's going to make more sense when we're programming. So first, Let's change the text to search, search like so. And second, change variable name, btn search. And same thing for the text field. I'm going to edit text. Let's take out that default text that's in there and then change variable name, txt search text like so. Now with the balance of the screen, I'm going to add a list. And the idea is that our list is going to show all of the plants that match our search criteria. As you see right now, it has some things that are hard-coded, item one, item two, three, four, five. So that's kind of a hard-coded model. The model is what the list wants to show. If I click on properties and I click on model, I'll see that it just has some hard-coded text here. Um, I'm going to change this to be custom code, and I'm going to say list model. Now, I want to remember that. I'm going to need that in a minute, so I'm going to copy that because I'm referring to a variable that I have not yet created. So let me copy this and choose OK. And let me do one more thing before I forget and change the variable name. We'll call it LST plants. Or whoops, try that one more time. Uh, LST plants and I'll choose OK. Now with that, I'm going to go back to source. And you see in the constructor, it has init components. That's where it is initializing our list. So before that happens, I need to declare something called a default list model. And actually, we're going to make this a field level variable. So I'll say default list model uh, model. Or, no, no, wait a minute. We called it list model, didn't we? Now, uh, alt enter to organize our imports. Yep, add import. OK, there we go. Now, in the constructor, I'm going to say list model equals new default list model. OK. It's important to do that before init components. Let me go ahead and save. It's important to do that before init components because remember what we did on our model here is we said user code and we set it to list model. 
which is exactly the variable that I've just created. Now, the reason why we want to make this a field level variable is this is the model where our search results will go. So in a different method, we're gonna search for some plants and we want to add those plants to this list model. So I go back to design view, I double click on search and you see what it does is it creates for me a, a little place where uh, I can put some code in when that button's clicked. In other words, a button event handler. Now we don't have all the wiring up just yet to actually make a plant or search for a plant, but we can kind of dummy some things up here. I can say list model dot add element, and I'm just going to add a string and we'll say white pine. So nothing fancy just yet, just a proof of concept, but at least we have a working UI. And just for S and G's, I could say list model dot add element. I had a couple elements and then we'll say white oak, okay? And again, terminate with a semicolon, save, and now let's go ahead and debug. Okay, uh, that's fine, plant admin is good. In just a minute, it should come up. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put in some search text here. Doesn't matter, because I don't have things wired up just yet. I'll put in white and click search, and you see white pine and white oak come up because those are my hard-coded variables here. Just a few more things to do then. Uh, let's see, we called, if I go back to our design, what did we call this? Change variable name, txt search text. Okay, what I can do is I can go back to source and I can say txt search text dot get text. And this will return to me string search text. This will return to me the, uh, the, the search value that the user entered in this form. And again, we're not doing anything with it just yet, but we will soon. At this point, we have done what we wanted to do in this video, which is build a nice, quick and dirty user interface. Nothing terribly special, but it is kind of a, you know, one of these, uh, what we call smart client or fat client applications, something that runs natively on your laptop, your PC, whatever your, uh, whatever your host computer system is. So in the next series of videos, we're gonna see how we can wire this up to uh, a, a, a server that's actually running server-side code that will uh, take our search data and return a list of matching plants. We're gonna do this with Spring Remoting, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I will see you in the next video. Thank you.